Hello, I'm Hugh McColl, an architect in the jade plant. In this talk, we'll cover jade containers and what we're delivering in the 2020 release to support containerization. In this section, we'll cover containers, what they are, briefly some of the benefits, the deliverables in 2020, and we'll finish up with a demo of jade containers in action. What are they? Containers as a virtualization mechanism are sometimes compared with traditional virtual machines. They differ in several ways, but the primary difference is that VMs virtualize hardware, whereas containers virtualize an operating system so that multiple workloads can run on a single OS instance. A container is basically a unit of software that packages up application code and its dependencies. So what are some of the benefits? Containers are more lightweight than a VM and start and stop more quickly. When your application services are packaged as containers, you can scale up and scale down services, e.g. Jade App Server nodes and web services more easily. You can also save on infrastructure cost because you are scaling containers rather than virtual or physical machines. It is important to note that containers and virtual machines are not mutually exclusive. Containers can run on top of bare metal servers or desktop machines on a hypervisor or in cloud infrastructure. They share all necessary capabilities with the VM to operate as an isolated OS environment for an application. This diagram shows a Microsoft analysis of the top drivers leading to container technology adoption in their customer base. I'm showing you this mainly to get you thinking about the potential of container technology if you haven't been already. Several other drivers are relevant to Jade applications, I believe. The upper quadrant is about application modernization. I've heard the term monolith being applied to legacy applications began their, that began their life 20 plus years ago. And there is the notion of carving up this monolith to obtain a microservices architecture. That kind of re-architecture will be a majorly and costly exercise. On the other hand, containerizing services, and for a Jade system, that's your DB, app server, and web services, this is achievable with no changes to application code. You could also look at containerization as a useful precursor to componentization at the application level. The lower left quadrant is about doing things like containerizing services on premises, in the cloud, or targeting a hybrid solution. Our in-house Jade operations team provided the container platform and is now hosting a third party internet banking system for a New Zealand based client. And this application currently integrates with their core Jade system. So in their case, containerizing the Jade system down the track will enable sharing common platform technology. Lower right, a properly provisioned container provides an additional form of isolation. Like anything though, it's not a silver bullet. Containers and container platform technology are not new to exploits. Finally, looking at the top quadrant in the DevOps world, containers were being are being used to improve processes and in continuous integration and delivery pipelines. I'd like to drill into that a bit further in a Jade context, looking at the notion of Jade DevOps using containers. Containers provide a consistent self-contained application environment that can be deployed onto varying target on infrastructure, again, on premises or in the cloud, starting from deployment through tests, through staging, and even up to production. Containers can be thought of as Lego building blocks that you can use to construct integration test environments, for example, comprising multiple Jade and third-party services. 
So an example might be an SDS environment with multiple secondary databases, an RPS secondary, a containerized SQL server instance. You might add in a containerized IIS server to testing web services and so on. So the sky's the limit in terms of combinations and it's easier to build those up from smaller components than configuring lots of virtual machines with the all hosting each of those different services. You may have heard of the term infrastructure as code, which is essentially defining machine infrastructure in, source, in a source code specification instead of doing it interactively through some sort of console. We can build on that principle and start thinking about application environments specified in source code that can then be checked into a source repository, version controlled and reused by different people in your team. Key benefits to this approach include consistency, repeatability and automation. You get consistency from deploying containers with the same base operating system, for example which then can be run on different machine infrastructure by going from your dev PC or laptop to a server to the cloud. Once you have your application environments definition source, if done properly, anyone on the team should be able to check out that source and deploy test application, perhaps starting on the same PC, but again, this is, could be anywhere server or in the cloud with little or no manual interaction. In the de demo that follows this chat, we'll take a look at how to apply an environment as code approach using the error one sample application. Before we get to the demo, let's look at some basic Docker concepts. A Docker file is a build script that contains the instructions to build a container image. The output of that build is the image, which is essentially a packaged service. When we run an image, it becomes a container, which is an instance of the image. And the container registry is a place for storing images. So similar to a source repository, but it's called a registry. Right, what are the main deliverables in 2020? The main benefit is you can run existing applications in a Docker-based ecosystem with no code changes. In earlier releases, you can run a database server node as a GUI application using the jadwrap.exe or as a Windows services, service using jadserve.exe. 2020 provides an additional JAD wrap B executable. So the B historically stands for batch. Um, it's equivalent to things like JDB util B or JAD app B. So this enables you to run a database server node as a console application. The main use case for this is to provide a Docker container ready entry point process. Now, the other two uh, services hosting console applications, these are existing services. The Jet App B, it's a console application that runs an application server node as a background process. And we also have Jet Client console application that runs a standard client node as a background process. This is the preferred way to run a SOAP or REST-based web service in a Docker container. The main extensions to these services to make them container registry are that they shut down gracefully when the container is stopped by a user or a container orchestrator. Container orchestrator is a name for a software service that manages the running and the health of a set of containers that make up a deployed application. So examples of container orchestrators are Docker Compose that we'll see in the demo, Kubernetes and Docker Swarm. So the images were in 2020, uh, Docker images that can be used to configure and deploy a fully containerized Jane environment. And these are served from the Jade Container Registry or JCR for short. 
accessible at the URL registry.jadeworld.io. <clears throat> Each container image is configured to run a single Jade process. And the code variants provided in our initial release cover Unicode, ANSI, and X64 variants. We are not providing 32-bit images in this release, and, and we probably won't until there is client demand. So look, let's look at some naming conventions. So images are named like that. We start with the registry name forward slash Jade. Jade's the namespace or project name, if you like. And that's followed by forward slash component name and colon a tag. So the component name is one of the service names, database server, application server, non-GUI client or GUI client. The tag is used to identify the version and build configuration. And its format is that, build version hyphen architecture hyphen code set. Illustrated by example, which is self-explanatory, we have the version hyphen x64 for 64-bit, hyphen u for Unicode, and it would be a for ANSI. An example of a full image node follows. So it's basically a registry name registry.jadeworld.aio forward slash j forward slash database server colon the tag. So some general um, concepts. Um, the base image uh, in, for our containers is the Windows base image uh, and it's the, the specific image is the long-term service channel, Windows Server 2019. Um, so Microsoft's registry is mcr.microsoft.com, and the image is identified as Windows forward slash server core, and their tag is LTSC 2019. Now for logging. Most container ecosystem Logging solutions are built to pull messages written to the standard out pipeline as a standard with Linux. Remember, containers kept, uh, originated on the, in the Linux world. Windows and Microsoft are just catching up. And for a while, Windows container application logs were not readily accessible via these logging solutions. Why is that? Legacy Windows apps typically don't write to standard out. They either log to the Windows event log, a file, or both. And with Jade, the majority of our logging is written to John message log files, as you know. So Microsoft came up with a solution to this that they've open sourced, and that solution is called Log Monitor. Jade container images incorporate this solution and it's um, the source is provided on github so we incorporate log monitor into all of our container images and in our case we've configured it to monitor john message log output basically just tails the log and writes it to standard out so that it can be accessed by the docker engine or by log collection tools such as fluent d or logstash they're a couple of the main ones now, in addition, J container images are configured to write logs, that is our John message log, to a mappable internal directory that can be bind mounted to an external directory on the host file system. We'll see how this works in the demo. This provides an additional simple way to persist and view John message log output from outside a running container. Now, just briefly, image update policy. Jade image base images will be updated to include cumulative hotfixes as they are released and on a regular basis to incorporate security and bug fixes update or bug fix updates rolled out by Microsoft and updates to their Windows Server Core base image. Support policy. 
Jade supports running Jade containers in on-premises configurations or cloud-based container platforms capable of correctly running Windows images based on the Windows Server core image. If you experience issues or have questions about Jade container-related or Docker functionality, Jade support is your first point of contact. Before we look at the demo, let's take a look at the at this, a diagram showing a simple Jade deployment it comprises a database server, an application server, along with a REST web service interacting with an IIS web server in a containerized environment. And note that IIS itself is running in a container. I would now like to show you how we can check out some source and use that to deploy a containerized application comprising the above services using the Aero One sample application all running on my laptop. So I've been talking and describing for a while. Let's see demo Jade containers in action. <laughs> 